right, this will be Satan's Bible study from January the 21st. Now, the preacher that they brought in uh, repeated a lot of information that I've already covered, as I stated uh, in my earlier videos of these, that there will be some repeats. So, I'm not going to be pulling out the book of fables uh, this time. But I will recite basically what he said and, uh, yeah, my uh, debunk to it. So, he starts off talking about, had to do with Adam and Eve, uh, claims that they lived in sin, lived sinless lives and that they were also vegetarians. Claims that they ate the forbidden fruit, that we are all guilty. Therefore, we are all guilty, question mark, question mark. I've covered my um, feelings about that in the uh, previous video, so I'll try not to go over that again. Uh, claims that we are at distance from God because of sin. Alright. And he also said that we will always fall short of his glory. Claims being kind and helping to others, quote, good works won't get you to heaven so i didn't put this in my notes but this did just jog my memory it's interesting how um i don't have it memorized but we're like jehovah's witnesses like if you're not if you're not knocking on doors or whatever then you got blood on your hands so like some so depending on what belief system you go on as far as christianity because some of them are different enough they're their own system some say good works won't go get you to heaven, while other ones say that if you're not doing something, then you're guilty and won't go. So it, there's a contradiction there. Um, so let's see here. Claims without God, we can't be saved. <sighs> so here's my rebuttal on this, at least what I wrote in the moment. So again, if God knows everything, He knows what we... He knows what to do to reveal himself. A victim blaming everyone for his bad planning is just shifting responsibility. You know, if you're going to be, you know, it goes back to what I stated in Adam and Eve. I'll try to be quick about it. But yeah, if he planned everything out, he put everything in motion, he's responsible. So blaming innocent, two innocent humans, innocent minded, because they had not ate, therefore they had no knowledge. That they, you know, even though, okay, let's say that they did just disobey. We ate the apple. But they were not knowledgeable of the consequences. Ye shall surely die. They don't know what the fuck die means. Die, death hasn't happened yet. So, again, I'm just restating that in this case, God is shifting the respons his responsibility. You know, you set shit in pl into play. You're the one that started it off. Everything beyond that is on you. So... Claims God is everywhere. I said, okay. Um, like what, Santa Claus? <laughs> it's always about what you uh, can do for him. Gee, that sounds abusive. God judges you on what you did wrong. Certainly not what he does wrong, because we know God does nothing wrong. Quote, wink, wink. I'm being sarcastic, if you don't know. So, um says, we don't deserve his grace. And mercy from God is to do with hold punishment from God. Yeah, I don't really understand what that means either. Um, so, again, a carrot and stick routine. Turn or burn. Then claims God's grace is shown to everyone. Uh, then I said, except to those... God killed in the Bible for disobedience or angering him. So yeah, apparently God's, quote, grace or love is quite limited to whether or not you offend him. Um, let's see here. Claims Jesus is God's son and was crucified for us. Uh, there's a lot to unpack there. I'm kind of choosing not to because we still got a little ways to go, but... 
it, we'll just say it's a claim and leave it there. Once again, human sacrifice and blood magic is necessary to save us from the hell he created. Ooh. So, uh, God gives, let's see here, hold on. So say God gives us a chance to not be tempted. Okay. We don't deserve anything good. This is all what the preacher was saying. God's grace gives us hope? Question mark. <laughs> Claims heaven gives us something to look forward to? Uh, essentially guilt tripping us into believing in God or we would be tortured forever. Pascal's wager, again. Claims Jesus is coming back. and I, Which I said to what? In the world? So, that I, that would be the end of this one. I actually thought it was a page more. However, I will say this, is that anybody who truly takes, like, I, I had an argument with this other person who is a Christian but doesn't follow the Bible. There's some things I'd like to talk about that when we're done with these notes. There's some things that aren't discussed. But... You know, if you don't take the Bible literally, whether you take it as parables or what, there's some people who claim to be Christian and then they don't take anything out of the book literal, then how can you call yourself a Christian? Like, I don't understand that. There's several different versions of Christianity, whether you're Jehovah's Witness, whether you're Catholic or whatever, Mormon, etc., etc., but at least they take some portion of it to be true, if not inspired, or yada, yada. And the whole point of that is that even in the broadest sense, okay, I realize not everybody who's a Christian takes everything literal. I understand that. And while I do, this, while I am using uh, this particular brand of Christianity as low-hanging fruit to make some easy points on, uh, I will back up and say that for the rest of the Christians who don't take the Bible literally, but take it kind of like how my mom does and a lot of other people they're what we uh seth andrews i believe called him uh, he may not be the only one cafeterian christians whereas you pick what you ref you know you pick the parts of the bible that reflect who you are and like ignore the rest they call that the sharpshooter fallacy where you you know accept you accept where you actually hit but you ignore all the misses and that's essentially what a lot of people do, unconsciously. I think most people are good people. Therefore, they will recite the stuff, that parts of the Bible that make them feel good. You know, treat others the way you want to be treated or whatever. Which, again, I think I brought up before, that's taken out of context. It's treat other Jews because it's talking to the Jews. But either way, even if you take it on parable... And you don't, and you take it as an inspiration and not literal, like a good portion of people, a good portion of people do. If you believe even that it's not literal, but like a, inspired by God, and that men have mucked things up, you're still the end story to the Bible. I I, I hate to tell you, I I read the ending, and um, yeah, it doesn't. I was going to make a joke, but really, Revelations doesn't make any fucking sense at all. But, you're essentially believing in a doomed, doomsday cult. If I'm just going to put it out there. there you, claims Jesus is coming back. And now, I did say, like, as a joke to what in the world. But, like, that's quite literally what they're waiting for, is the end of the world. So that there could be a new one that takes its place. Like, then what was the point of this one? Like, if, if God was just going to have a whole bunch of people believe in Him, and then, you know, pick those people out, remove their memory so that they don't feel, you know, the loss of all the people that went to hell, make a new place, you know, He could have saved all the people that went to hell, and skip all the, the mind erasing, and just make people, you know, the way He wanted it. In the first place, you know, there, where's the free will? They say, well, God allows sin and evil so that there's free will and free choice. And I say, bullshit. Because the end result, if we take this to the very end here, what is the means of the end? The means of the end is to get all the people who willingly believe 
separated from those who didn't believe or were disgusted, ban all those people to a to a endless burning pit of, or whatever, depending on which version. Some people say the absence of God is in cold and would be in isolation. You know, cold, not burning fire. It depends on which version you want to fall into. Either way, the quote winners, the people who believe, go to heaven. And like the reason I said mine, you know, erased is because, and it may, reminds me of a conversation I have with my mom where I tried to explain this to her. If you go to heaven and I don't make it, are you sad? Will you miss me? You know, which she did give kind of a cold answer. She said, no, because I told you, you, you knew. So, I, one, I don't believe that. I don't believe that anybody, any mother who truly loves their child or children could not feel sad or any level of sorrow of, hey, I made it to heaven and where's my, where's my child or children, Right? So, I don't believe that. And the only way that... And even if one or two mothers are like that, I don't think they all are. Or parents in general. There's no way that you can contentedly live in, quote, heaven. Or a new paradise, a new earth, as the Jehovah's Witnesses believe. Um, and have no memory of that. And not feel ill. Without being, like, some kind of level of sadistic or, you know, like depraved or some level, ha ha, they lost, like, with, so you'd either have to erase their memory or remove their, their heart, in a, in a sense of, like, their ability to feel compassion, so, yeah, to, the, Christianity to me, when you look at the means to the end, it, it is a death cult, that's, that's all I can really see, right down to the necklaces and stuff, you know, what, what do they wear, they, you know, I'm wearing, well, I got my Lucifer shirt on, but I'm wearing my uh, necklace here. This is what I got from Savannah from Black Witch Coven. And it's, I don't know if you can see it here or not, but it's got a snake eating its tail or something, and it's got her sigil. Like, I get it. It's not exactly, you know, religious and compelling in, a, in one way. However... At least it doesn't have a, a dead person, you know, in pain. And that's supposed to be, you know, as the guy said earlier, I'll, I'll cut it too quick here. You know, if that is God's son, if that is the compassion that God has for his own, quote, son, is let's sacrifice my only son to save all these people from, from shit that I started way back in the beginning of this book. I don't want that kind of... I don't want that kind of compassion from that kind of God. I don't want nothing to do with that. Burn me in the fire, or leave me in the cold, or whatever the fuck your form of hell is. This is not a God that is deserving of worship. And I'll leave it there.